Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's uh, rare to find this many people that believe that they have a hero within themselves. It's one of the things that I believe, that everybody has a hero within themselves, and it's that character that most people have yet to give life to. It's a character that's se secretly hidden within your mind that helps you overcome tremendous difficulties and problems. And the big problem is, is that most people don't know that they have two personas or two personalities. One is the right brain and the other is the left brain. And so what we're going to do is I've given you a little uh, worksheet here and I've given you a picture of Captain Biorhythm on the front. And what I'd like you guys to do is just take a few moments and follow the instructions that are written in red. And uh, I want you to go ahead and just raise your hand once you're finished doing uh, that particular exercise. Okay, well, it's a very interesting group of people that's here because normally when people would look at this shirt, they would see a combination of different things. They would see the colors, they would see the symbols, they would see the writing. And for the majority of the people that are here, I would say we have a bunch of right-brainers creative, spontaneous, intuitive, emotional, people that are tied into a seeing things in a holistic way, because to be able to think that you have a hero within, you have to tune in to your holistic side. It's the character that develops emotion and passion, because that's the most important thing if you're creating a hero, is you have to have passion for what you do. You can't be a hero and you can't do special things or gain incredible powers unless you would do that particular thing, even if you weren't getting paid for it. And a lot of people, how many people here love what they do? How many people would be doing it if they weren't getting paid? Okay, how many people would do it if they had all the money in the world? Okay, well, you know, it's most of the people that are here, and that's the reason why you're here. That's why most of the left brainers did not show up for this particular thing because coming out of your left brain, which is the logical, the judgmental, the mathematical and verbal skills, it's into competition, it's into judgment, it's all those things that have to do with how you appear in society. You know, and it's way too threatening to not fit into the mold. I have to compliment you guys that you have the courage to be here to actually feel that you have the potential of being different. In fact, you probably are different because I've never done a group like this where so many people saw mostly colors, symbols, images, um, came up with emotions. Most people, 90% of the people I've done, and I've done thousands of tests with my costume because the costume is actually a test of your brain hemispheres, whether you're right brain dominant or left brain dominant. And most people, 90%, end up getting trapped by looking at the shirt. 90% of the people start by reading what's on the shirt. They don't even see the colors. They don't come up with any type of emotion or anything that's related to something that extends your mind power other than just reading from left to right. Because the dominant left brain, it's logical, judgmental, mathematical, and verbal skills, it reads from left to right. So the average person that would look at this shirt, they would look at it and the first thing they do is they would start reading. And they would see Captain, Rhythm. They stand there and they think a, bit, a little bit longer and they go, Captain Byer with them. And then they would look and go, well, Tennis Sinet. Did anybody see Tennis Sinet? I saw Tennis. I saw Tennis mm -hmm. and I thought, what does in that mean? I saw Tennis, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure of the other words. Okay, now, most people get locked into that particular thing because the logical brain, it reads from left to right. It can't see words as symbols and it can't see symmetry. It doesn't see things as a whole picture. And so 90% of the people, they will only see Tennis Sinet. Tennis Sinet. They're trapped into that particular mode. And so I tell them a story. I used to be a tennis pro. For 30 years I taught students tennis and this is why I came up with this costume. This shirt actually comes from the movie Skateboard. Back in 1978 I was director of the Pepsi-Cola Skateboard Safety Program and we had the California Rainbow Team where we'd send skateboarders out to all the high school and elementary schools to do skateboarding demonstrations about skating safely. And so there was a movie called Skateboard, and so we had our California Rainbow team in the movie. And I was in that movie too, and so we all had jerseys. And so this is like the only existing jersey from that movie over 30 years ago. And over the years, I've used it as a way of testing my students, because in tennis, most people beat themselves, don't they? You know, and most sports people beat themselves, because 
you have this horrible dialogue going on inside of your head. You're a loser. You're going to serve it into the net. You're going to hit it out. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that. And, you know, it doesn't take any type of ability to do that. It just seems that that negative voice is going on all the time. And that's your logical, judgmental, mathematical, and verbal skill part of your brain because it's constantly putting you down. It internalizes all the horrible things that people have told you over your lifetime. And you don't even need those people around. You're just doing it all the time. And who are you talking to? You know, if you've got that dialogue going on, you've got to be talking to somebody. And so what happens is that dominant brain is talking to your creative, spontaneous, intuitive, emotional brain, which is the one that's in charge of life support. It's the one that's doing anything and everything. And so if you beat it up enough, what, what happens in your performance in life or performance in sports? All of a sudden, your uh, non-dominant brain, your creative, spontaneous brain says, well, screw you. You're going to be that abusive to me. I'm not participating. I'm going to just have your whole game completely fall apart. And then all of a sudden, you just kill yourself. You can't hit the point in. And so I saw that. And so to get my students to find their hero within, because you really need a hero to help you deal with that negative abuse that comes from your other brain hemisphere, and uh, I don't know why it internalizes all that, but you really need a real hero inside to be able to do that. And so the hero is the one that sees everything from a holistic perspective. It's the emotional. It has all the emotions. And so to be able to see that, you'd have to actually end up seeing that it's actually, instead of tennis sinet, it's something different. I tell all my students is that people, sinet is actually a word where people sin at the net. Do you know where the word sin came from? Back in medieval days, they had a big giant black spot on a target. People would shoot arrows at it, and if they missed the black spot, a guy would raise a flag and go sin, which means miss the mark. And so in tennis, people sin at the net, and I call that tennis suicide. Do you know what tennis suicide is? It has to do with the net. The ball hits the net. The ball hits the net. You hit it right in the net. You just killed yourself on that point. Nobody helped you. You did that all on your own. And so sin at is you send at the net. The goal is to hit it over the net, not into the net. So I tell people that story where sin at is a word and I actually created it. But in all actuality, I tell them that story because I'm trying to get them over into their creative, spontaneous, intuitive, emotional brain, which is the one that sees symmetry. And so actually, instead of tennis sin at, so actually tennis, tennis. You know, and it takes a while for people to see that. Um, Tracy saw it. Uh, who else saw the tennis, tennis? John, did you see it? No. How many people actually saw tennis, tennis? I've seen it before. I've seen it before. And see, that's the secret of the shirt. This is a 30-second uh, test to see whether a person is right brain or left brain dominant. You show people this picture, and then you can immediately tell how their brain works on what they see first. Either they see colors, or they see symbols, or they start doing the reading. And most people here, very few people talked about any of the writing on the shirt. I think how many people actually wrote down anything about the writing? Let me see a show of hands. Just two people, but Tracy's into uh, graphic arts. And so she noticed the type font, she noticed the text, uh, she noticed the symbolism because that's what she does. She has that type of brain that works in both areas. And so it's a simple way, and when you understand how your brain works and how people that are in your life, how their brain works, it gives you a much better ability to be able to relate to them and understand where they're coming from when they communicate. Because women are much greater communicators than are men because they use both sides of their brain. Their corpus callosum, which is the connector in the brain between the right brain and the left brain, is like four times the size of men. And that's why they can multitask much better. They seem to be able to do a lot more where men are just target oriented. Their left brain is so dominant in most cases, they are just going toward one target and they will die in the process of getting there. Or women have the ability to communicate, you know, they see body language and, you know, it's a much different thing. It's called change direction. Yeah, and so women are much more unique. So what we're going to do next is that uh, we've got a lot of people that are uh, right brainers here, which is a good thing. The creative, spontaneous, intuitive, the people actually feel that they have a hero within. Now the next thing I want you to do is we're actually going to determine just how dominant your right or your left brain is. And so we want you to fill out this little questionnaire, Dominant Brain Hemisphere Learning Exercise. We're going to give you like uh, five minutes to just uh, circle 
which of those, and you can circle uh, both the yes and the no if that applies to you, or just yes if it's really a dominant yes, or just no if it's a dominant no, but if it applies both of, both of them to you, you can circle both the yes and the no, and there are no right or wrong answers for this, because what we're doing is we're just finding out and helping you understand how your brain works, because the true ultimate potential that everybody has inside of them is to become a bio man or a bio woman, where they start using both their right brain and their left brain, they use their right side and their left side, and all of a sudden, when you have yourself working together, you have a team, a team that's working in harmony to help you fulfill the great potential that God gave you when he created you. Most people never achieve their full potential because they have no idea what type of person it is. Everybody should know this as a kid. You know, how does, that, how does that kid's brain work? You know, what type of person are they? If we knew that, then we could actually gear our training not just to left brain kids because virtually everything that we learn in school is all left brain. It's just rote memory. It crushes the creativity, the spontaneity, the intuitiveness, the emotions. And that's the problem with the world today, is that we have so many left-brainers up there that are into logic, judgment, math, competition. You know, that's why the world is falling apart, because there are no new answers. The people with the creative, spontaneous, intuitive minds, with the whole new answers to the questions, have been suppressed and oppressed in the schools. Or just a whole bunch of people that basically can just wrote and memorize stuff. We don't have any ability to integrate stuff and come up with new answers and new solutions to the same problems. And so if everybody just fills that out, because we want you to know and be in touch with yourself after you go through these exercises of who you really are, who your real inner hero is, and maybe even flesh out that character, maybe give that character a name. You know, I get a lot of help, but I don't know if you're spiritual in any way, but I believe that everybody has a guardian angel. And the guardian angel is the a uh, supernatural being that helps you do the right things, that helps you overcome obstacles and difficulties. And through prayer, a lot of times, you can actually come up with somebody that will stand in a difficult time for you, because most of the times, you integrate your body and your brain spontaneously, but you do it only in times of great sorrow or times of great joy. When things are really difficult and you really need to get both sides of your brain working together, the first thing that you do is you clasp your hands in prayer. Oh, God, please help me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Or, hooray, I'm the victor. You know, you clasp your hands together and raise your hands up in victory. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, when you hold your hands together, you're actually integrating your right brain and your left brain because you're closing the circuit of your energy. You're actually implementing both sides of your body and brain. And it's one of the secrets that I discovered that in a stressful situation, if you can just put your hands together, all of a sudden that allows you access to all the resources that are in your mind and turns you into an instant genius. It actually gives you the ability to deal with what's going on at that moment in time. And if it's really a stressful situation, um, you'll notice that spontaneously you just clasp your hands together. If you look at little kids, they do that all the times. They're always touching themselves, they're always holding themselves, they're always protecting their energy from having it bleed out. And most people, they're so geared toward just competition and judgment. And, you know, everybody puts a persona in front of the world that isn't really who they are. People are desperate to find real people that are honest, that have integrity, that aren't afraid to show their emotions or who they really are. Okay. We're going to give you guys uh, another minute, so see if you can finish that. Uh, um, how many people have finished that test? Okay. Keep on going because it's important and add up the numbers on each side and then put the numbers down at the bottom because this is going to show you what type of uh, brain hemisphere dominance you have. Ideally, the score that you'd have at the bottom would be equal. That would mean you're using your right side and your left side because the idea is that once you realize you're dominant on one side or the other side, you want to start working on the area where you're out of balance. That's how you attain true genius where you become what I call a bio-man or a bio-woman. Somebody that utilizes both their right side and their left side. And one of the techniques that I've developed in tennis was getting people to use both hands um, with a tennis ball and also with a tennis racket. Um, I have a racket with two handles on it. And I could immediately help my students improve their game by 100% just by breaking the patterns of failure that they had created 
by being in a situation where their dominant brain was saying, you're a failure, you're going to lose, you're not going to be able to hit that point, uh, you're going to hit it into the net. It's just such a devastating thing. And the other big sport like that too is golf. You know, you're your own worst enemy. You can hit a couple of shots perfectly and then you get up and all of a sudden, boom, whatever reason your brain is going down that trail and you're up there and all of a sudden you get the shakes and all of a sudden you completely whiff the ball or you hit it into the woods or whatever. And everybody is constantly dealing with that. I worked with the San Diego Chargers uh, back when I was director of a chain of health spas in San Diego and I also worked with the San Diego Soccers. So I worked with professional, professional athletes and I taught them the secret things that we learned about balancing out the right side and the left side and doing stretching programs that actually would bring both parts of the body and brain to work together as a whole so that you could actually achieve incredible genius. You know, and my goal is to help parents to understand this and actually start teaching their kids all this stuff at an early age so they don't go down the same trail that I did and most of the people in my generation where it was just like, gee, one mistake after another mistake after another mistake, especially in the area of relationships with other people. Just having no idea why we're set up for failure because of the way that we're communicating with other people that are in our lives. Okay, let's go ahead and deal. What's your feeling about being born left-handed or right-handed? I think that's a great thing that it gives you the opportunity to work on the other hand. Because whatever hand is dominant, that one is geared toward the dominant brain hemisphere. The left brain <clears throat> controls the right side. The right brain controls the left side. So if you're a right-hander, what you're doing is you're constantly building up that particular brain hemisphere. I was right-handed when I was born. And so when I played tennis, I started off right-handed. And so, you know, I must have done like a million shots over all the years. And one day when we learned about the right brain and the left brain back in 1980, I looked at myself in the mirror and I looked like this grotesque character. I would go like this and I looked like Popeye on one side. I had this massive, gigantic arm on one side. It was all built up on the side. And I was turned around on the other side. I also looked like I had polio. Yeah, <laughs> walking around as this distorted being, you know, I thought I looked pretty good, so most of the time when I would deal with people, I would be putting my good side first, you know, I would never deal with anybody from this side, and so it took me a year, you know, to just try and balance out my both sides, I just stopped doing everything right-handed and started doing everything left-handed, I actually lived as Captain Byer with him for a year when I was director of a chain of health spas, I said, well, if I really want to develop my creative, spontaneous, intuitive brain, I'm just going to wear my costume to work every day and test everybody's brain hemisphere. So I had my car painted up as the Biomobile. And so I had on the side uh, Captain uh, Bio. You know, and it was just like, no, go no good deed goes unpunished. Everybody kept on asking me, who's Captain B10? <laughs> no, it was just a, a, a message that did not mix with the market, you know, and I'm still struggling to try and get this, you know, message out of people becoming balanced beings and utilizing their full powers because there's so much societal pressure on just being left brain and filling in and being like everybody else that we've lost the creativity, the spontaneity, the, the emotions. We've lost that ability to interrelate with other people where relationships are just pretty much hollow. Actually, my question was more geared towards the fact that most people are born right-handed, so that means, does that automatically mean they're more left brain? Or if, now I see more left-handed people, but back then, if you had a child born left-handed, you were trying to get them to be right-handed. You know what I mean? Do, do you think that um, we're kind of predisposed even before, you know, as a child, to be left-handed, right-handed, and, okay, um, so you're going to think lefty, you're Right. Not really. There's been just a huge societal pressure over all the years. Anybody that was left-handed was considered just weird. Um, it was called strange. It was called also sinister. Throughout uh, the history of mankind, anybody that was different was considered weird or strange um, because they threatened everybody else that was all the same. They're all right-handed. And society does not like change. It doesn't like people that are different. So it tries to force everybody into the same mold. So it destroys the creativity and the spontaneity. So let's go around the room and uh, see what the scores are. Jim, what was your two scores? Uh, 12 and 20. 12 and 20. So you're much more right brain than left brain. Because the way that it is, is the column to the left is your left brain, and the column to the right is your right brain. On, on this test. Yes. On this test. Okay, Dia, what was yours? 7 and 20. <laughs> 7 and 20? 5 and 19. 5 and 19? <laughs> okay, Candy. 
We'll go to Mike. Uh, he's counting. How about Roger? I think I was nine and twenty. Okay, uh, Chris. Uh, uh, Wait a second, did I do this wrong? Are you supposed to give points to different ones? No, everything just has one point. Well, there's 25 points. Yeah. Well, some, well, some people don't answer them all. Okay. <laughs> I'm a black and white guy, so I'm saying, why didn't these come up to 25? Well, we don't have the same number on each one. The answer to each one, yeah. yes and no. But some, if, if you answered yes on each of them, you'd have 25, 25. Uh, but some you answer yes, so if you add up the total, and you just did one at a time, then you have a total of 25. Oh, it's negative of me. It's black or white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was your score? 10-15. 10 15. And uh, Candy, what was yours? 8 and 17. 8 and 17. Uh, and then Chris? 8 17. 8 17. Tracy? 13 19. 13 19. Lauren? 12 13. Uh, there you go. Okay, Ruby? 14 11. Okay, Carl? Well, it's 8 and 17, but some of them should have been. I should have marked both sides. Okay, how about John? 14-16. Okay. 14, 14, okay. 14-14. 14-14. Okay, the closer you are together, that means the more integrated you are, the more you're using both of those brain hemispheres, which is really a good thing. So that's always an interesting thing. Now, also have here is the reason why I have my costume with all the colors on it. I've given you a chart of how the right and the left brain actually work together and what the meaning of colors are. And so you can use this, and I create up little, little uh, words that uh, help you remember what the different colors are, where your right brain hemisphere activities, um, the basic colors for your right brain, which is the creative, the spontaneous, the intuitive. And if you look over in the black on the right side of the page, you have in white the different characteristics of that brain hemisphere. So it helps you begin to learn what are the characteristics of your right brain. And if you look on the left-hand side, which is the left brain, then you see the characteristics of your left brain. And this helps you realize what are the skills and powers that are unique to each of the brain hemispheres because you should be able to access all those different skills and abilities that both of the brain hemispheres are working together because the idea is you want them to work in harmony. And you can see that the primary colors that I used on my shirt are red, blue, yellow, and green because the shirt itself is a gigantic stimulus. It has symbols, it has words, and it's designed to put your brain into a state of stress. And so when you come out with what you see or what you feel, that tells us how your brain is dealing with stress. Because normally walking around in my costume, you just don't think, gee, that guy's really a cool dude or whatever. You just think, what in the freaking world is wrong with that guy? <laughs> you know, especially if he's wearing a costume. But you know, the funny thing is, is that each and every one of you has got your costume on for the day. You know, don't you think that you've got your own special costume? How many people here dress so they would feel that they look totally ugly? I did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get here. <laughs> <laughs> How many people here, when they get dressed and they're going out, they actually want to look their best? And in really special situations, don't you have like a, a unique shirt or a special watch or a, a unique piece of jewelry? You, you know, especially if it's going to be a challenging event, you want something special. And that's your secret, uh, um, oh, let's say, uh, not, it's a, your, your secret hero's power, it's your secret object that gives you the power to address the hero within. Because everybody does it, you do it unconsciously. Nobody ever goes out of the house, especially if they want to look their best, where they don't take something special, a special shirt or a special ring or a special watch. Because they know that that's going to give them the courage to be able to deal with whatever they're working with that particular day. So I just happen to have a costume that's a little bit more outrageous than yours. You know, you think that you know, I look totally weird and the whole thing. Well, what do you think I look at all you guys and what you're wearing? I mean, how could so many people just be so blah, so mundane? You know, who wouldn't want to wear an outrageous outfit? I mean, isn't the whole idea in business is to get noticed and have people remember who you are and what you do? I mean, why do you want to just fill in and be the same as everybody that's there? I mean, I go to all the chamber events and different networking events and Everybody's pretty much the same. They get up and they just have this thing. They talk about their business rather than about themselves. They have no story that anybody's ever going to remember. You know, when I get up and I start peeling off the layers of my costume, all of a sudden, that's something that most people won't forget. 
And so I also brought with me today, I, I left Ralph home. I brought Captain Biorhythm because I wanted you to do the brain test. And so underneath, I've got a Bioman. And this is where everything works together. Both brain hemispheres are in harmony. That's how I feel best wandering around in the Texas heat. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody has a bio man or a bio woman within them. And the way that you do that is you join your hands together and realize you have a right side and you have a left side. And you need to start working with both of those hands at the same time because that's the fastest way of bringing yourself into balance is using your non-dominant hand. I know when I used to do martial arts and I'd be doing the moves and the punches and all that other stuff, I just think, gee, my left arm is so wimpy, you know. It just, uh, I mean, I just hope that the person comes over on this side and let them have it with my right arm. You know, just because that side was so built up. And you see that a lot of people will actually deal with other people, they'll put their best side forward. And in most cases, especially men, because they're more aggressive, they're more dominant, they'll put their right side, their dominant side forward. They'll always be talking to you from this perspective. Women are more open because they're better able to use both sides of their body. Now what I'd like you to do is to remember these colors and think about how these colors impact other people and when you're dressing and when you're in a situation where you have to go somewhere, think about what type of impression you want to have psychologically on other people because just wearing these colors actually has a huge impact on how you feel and how people react to you. Now on the final page, and this will be your last exercise, is I've created a mind map. And I want everybody here to be a, either a bio man or a bio woman and to integrate both their right side and their left side. And if you have a hard time doing this, um, I want you to clasp your hands together. And uh, today I want you to give everybody the uh, secret Captain Biorhythm handshake. Does anybody know what the secret Captain Biorhythm handshake is? Jim, can I get you to come up here and... Uh, <laughs> you never We're going to do the secret the Captain Byer of the handshake. Okay, now when people, <laughs> when people shake hands, most of the times it's just right hand, right hand. And what this does is the dominant hands. Again, it's the competition, it's the judgment. You know, it's sort of like an aggressive type thing. And so everybody does right hand and they're all forced to doing it. Well, the secret Captain Byer of the handshake is you go like this. And then we balance out both sides. <laughs> and that makes a difference. And when you're doing that, you're actually integrating somebody because you're using the right side and the left side. And I guarantee you when you do that, there's something special that happens because all of a sudden, instead of having your energy in opposition, all of a sudden now it's balanced. And you just can't help but smiling and feel good about that transaction, that exchange of energy because you're not sucking the life energy out of other people. You're actually creating a circuit where the energy is balancing back and forth. And it also comes in a situation where you actually are hugging somebody. Most of the times the most powerful hug is when you put your hands and you grasp your hands together, you touch your hands on the other side of the person and they do that for you because you're closing the energy circuit. The energy, acupuncture energy, comes in the left side and goes out the right side. When you take your hands and hold them together, all of a sudden you create a spinning vortex of energy that empowers and energizes your whole body and brain your energy isn't leaked off. So that's one of the powerful ways of doing that. So what I would like you to do for the last couple of minutes, we've only got five minutes left, is to write in to the inner circle your superhero character name and then give them some attributes. And it can be anything. It can be strong, uh, beautiful, smart, uh, courageous, faithful, Uh, you put the name of your character right in the center, mm -hmm. and then you just write it on these lines, the words on these lines that actually uh, relate to your character. And if you've ever done a mind map, you can actually have angles coming off of it, have like little uh, other lines coming off, um, let's say uh, um, emotional. Um, you can have like uh, love others. Um, you know, this integrates both the right brain and the left brain. It's just concepts. And, you can use the different letters as a way of coming up with different words, like G for good, H for helpful, I for uh, intellectual, J for judicious, K for uh, uh, kind, 
L for loving, A for uh, um, actualized, B for uh, beautiful, C for cunning, D for uh, dutiful, E for excellent, F for uh, faith or fine. Do you want to give those to us a little more slowly? Well, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm you have to come up with some of this stuff for yourself. Now, this is a, this is a this is the tutorial on how to find your hero within. We're helping to stimulate both your right brain and your left brain to get them to work together. And the little CD that I have given you, the DVD, is a whole training course that I did for an uh, internet marketing seminar group of parents and their kids on how to explore their hero within and come up with their own hero's marketing program. And it will fill out all the different things that we're actually having you do here, where it will expound on what I've talked about today. Today is just a brief overview of what's going on, but it would be good to have your whole family do the exercises and just watch the video together. Because it also explains Captain Byer with him, uh, Ralph Saransky, and how to integrate both sides and how I've developed this character over the last, uh, I created in 1976, so 86, 96, 2000, over 30 years I've been working on promoting this character. And Captain Byer with him has become famous at the San Diego Comic Con. So there's over 100,000 people a day. And that's like the ultimate venue for my character of where he became famous by being of service and helping others. Let's go ahead and uh, we're running a little bit on time. Uh, Jim, did you uh, come up with a character uh, name for uh, your superhero? Yeah, but I, I haven't really fully defined it yet, but it's Verbal Man. Verbal Man. Verbal Man. Yeah, Verbal Man. Oh, <laughs> uh, on the right side, I've got uh, Help People Articulate Their Stories, Expressive, Strong Vocabulary. On the left side, Stickler for on Pronunciation and a Grammar Nazi. <laughs> How about the uh, oh, You have to skip me. I did this totally wrong. Okay. I put in someone that I know. Okay. And described her attributes. Okay. Well, like would there be attributes that you'd want to <laughs> exemplify? Yes. That's so you would want to be that person. Yes. That's okay. What so what, what attributes does she have? Go, this is my godmother. Her name is Marita. And, her, and I thought we're supposed to do like A, B, C, D, a word with A. You could. It doesn't matter. Oh, There's no right or wrong way. Said. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody listens to instructions and do them a different way. Okay. <laughs> how about Connie? Listening. Did you come up with a name for your character? <laughs> okay. How about Candy? No. How about uh, Stevie? I'm super kind. Okay. Yeah. How about Barbara? I haven't gotten a name. Okay, Mike? Captain Dependable. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. How about uh, uh, Roger? Raj Man. Roger Man, okay. <laughs> Just Raj Man. What is it? Raj Man. Raj Man, okay. Chris? Um, well, Mama's first heart, and so I, I found the H over here. Then I couldn't find the T, so I drew my own line, and, and actually mine is true heart. True heart. Oh, good. Mine is T money. T money? T money, M-O-N-E-Y? Okay. Lauren? I'm still working on mine. Okay, Ruby. <laughs> I just put Karen first. What is it? Karen, without care for people. Oh, okay. Roger, I mean, Carl? I haven't quite figured it out yet. Okay, John? Sales <laughs> talk. Sales dog. All right, all right. In the back? No. Okay. Well, yeah. You, you see how hard this is to do. How you know it's so hard to go from less to more. And the reason why I wear my costume is to put you in a situation of stress because the only way a person can go from where they're at and they're stuck in that place to a place where they can have more is it has to get so stressful that your body and your brain need to work together to make a quantum leap to a place where everything is different because the hardest thing in the world is to change yourself. 
it's even more difficult to be different than everybody else that's in your peer group that has this one vision of who you are. You're sort of trapped in that one place. So. Did you ever wear an afro, red, white, blue wig at one time? No, I had a big afro <laughs> wig. And it's a part of the evolution of my character. I'm creating a whole story about it. It's a pretty funny story. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it wasn't. It was just, it was enough. It was afro. You know, this character, I've been developing this character for over 30 years, and it's a lifelong process. And I encourage you guys to start thinking about yourself as a hero, because if you're a hero, then you can find the hero in other people. If you can't be a hero, because ultimately, God says that you should love your neighbors as you love yourself. Until you can get to the point and you can shut down the horrible dialogue that makes you hate yourself, there's no way that you're ever going to love yourself or you're ever going to be able to love anybody else because the world is at war and it's a war that's going on inside the mind of every person. Until we make peace with ourselves, we will never see any peace in the world because until we can love ourselves, we, it's impossible to love anybody else. And so that's it for today. I want everybody to uh, continue to evolve and look at the DVD because it will help you and look at it with people in your family and work through it because God knows we need all the heroes we can get in the world today. All right, thank you.